This is Medio Mundo. Hi everyone, Rusty back here with your latest Video Mundo forecast. Got an update for this late Tuesday night into early on Wednesday morning. Uh, in the last forecast video, uh, I wanted to talk more about the amount of rain I think we could see in certain areas. So I kind of wanted to come back on and do this video to cover that a little bit more in depth. So we're going to really highlight where I expect some potential heavy and excessive rain through the Caribbean over the next five days. I've got the newest GFS model run on that potential tropical disturbance in the Caribbean early next week as well. And we'll kind of get into what's been happening in the short term as well. So since I last saw you, we continue to see heavy rain move through portions of Central America. It's relatively quiet through the rest of the Caribbean until you get to the Lesser Antilles. For Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, we have some good rain there. And then the Leeward and the Windward Islands, we've seen some significant rain in portions of those areas develop throughout our Tuesday. Now, all this is shifting off towards the west, but some of the heavier rain will continue. And additional heavy rain is in the forecast later in the week as well. Let's get into what's been happening in Central America. We focus a lot of time in this region for very good purpose. Again, flooding rains continue in these areas, especially with rising rivers levels and it can take days and days and days past the rainfall to really see those river levels peak. It's very area dependent, but uh, on this Tuesday, we saw more heavy additional rain for coastal portions of Honduras, some areas of Nicaragua through portions of coastal Guatemala into the central sides of Guatemala and portions of Belize as well. So we'll kind of start up to the north. And again, this is the enhanced satellite imagery, but underneath this thicker cloud cover certainly could still be some heavier downpours. Uh, I showed you some of the video from San Ignacio earlier here of those river levels beginning to rise. We've had sporadic reports of urban flooding through portions of Belize as well. And again, if you live in this area, drop it in the comments section below. Let me know how you guys have been faring. We still have that heavy rain right across the northern coastline of Honduras, basically from La Chiba, San Pedro Sula, the Roatan area, and then moving west towards Amatique Bay and then moving into Guatemala. Those are the areas that have still had the heaviest rain. And then we've had a blow up of some showers and storms in places like San Salvador, San Miguel, Tegucigalpa, uh, and towards areas south and east of there as well, as far south as Managua. But underneath this, we would expect there to be some heavier showers and storms, and that's in more uh, hillier terrain which means mudslides are an issue and all that water has to flow back down towards the coast. So we could have issues there. It's a little bit quieter the farther south that you go in Central America, but we've had a few blow up of showers and storms in portions of Southern Costa Rica and into Panama. All right, let's also look what's been happening here. And I've had some of you guys uh, give me some updates in this area here, uh, the Lesser Antilles. We've had some good rain through portions of the islands today. It's area dependent. But from Trinidad and Tobago up towards Grenada, again, nice downpours from time to time. Got some reports of some heavier rain in places like Barbados. St. Lucia had some good showers and storms today. St. Vincent looks to have gotten in on the act as well, Martinique. And as I mentioned in the last video, when you get north of Dominica, more than likely it's going to be a little bit more sporadic in nature. So you get up towards Anguilla and St. Kitts and Nevis and Antigua and Barbuda and uh, Montserrat, not as much rain there. Then we switch off towards the west. There wasn't a lot of rain in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands until late afternoon through the evening hours. And then we had a decent blow up of showers and storms. Again, still area dependent there, but the opportunity for some good downpours for places like Roadtown and St. Croix and St. Thomas, then off the coastal islands there, uh, Culebra and Esperanza, but even places like San Juan and Ponce got into the act for today. So that's kind of what's happening in the short term. Let's talk about what is going to continue over the next five days with this rain and really why I wanted to jump back on here. First of all, let me switch back over real quick to the satellite perspective, because when I put this into the water vapor imagery here, again, you notice there is some dry air in the central portions of the Caribbean up towards Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. We have all of that moisture down towards the Central America area. And then this moisture, you notice that there is some moisture gathering ahead of where we had that rain. That is what's going to be very prominent moving from east to west, replacing this drier air. So now more moisture laden air coming back into the forecast. So let's see how this plays out here. I'm going to, I've been looking at the GFS model here. I want to get back down to the five day time frame and show you this first. Then we'll get into the extended forecast 
coming up. But over the next five days, what you're going to notice is moisture continuing to move from east to west. Then in the southwest Caribbean, it really begins to gather some steam Friday and into the weekend. This is where we would see the potential beginning of this tropical disturbance forming. And again, the Hurricane Center at this point in time still not highlighting an area, but I promise you they're monitoring things. And you know, as we get closer in time, we'll take a look at a lot of different models, but I do wanna focus on the GFS because I've shown you this kind of day to day and run to run, and we're starting to get a little bit more consistency. The GFS is still fairly bullish on developing a disturbance into the Northwest Caribbean into early next week. As far as track and intensity, of course, those are variables we'll have to consider farther down the road. But you see this moisture coming into play, and that's kind of one of the highlights here. So as we get through uh, tomorrow and into our Thursday, scattered showers will be abound. Look, there's nothing going to be concentrated, even not as much rain for the Leeward Islands as what we had. And thankfully, again, we're drying out in Central America. That drying out will really begin tomorrow. We could still see a few showers inland, but I'm hoping the coastal areas get rid of those downpours, and then we at least get a few days to dry out there. Some of the areas, though, as this moisture begins to pick up a bit, uh, that is going to see additional heavier rainfall, portions of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic towards Haiti. You can see some scattered showers on and off as we get into our uh, Friday and then into Saturday. But really, again, the main focus area is going to be in the Southwest Caribbean. And you're going to start to see this moisture really begin to gather up right there and then move north and west. So on the tail end of this for the ABC Islands, Rain chances increasing for you as well, but especially for places like our friends in Jamaica, Kingston, Port Antonio, Port Moore, Mandeville, Maypen, Montego Bay, Negril, everyone on the island, you're going to see your rain chances really begin to come back up as we get into the weekend. Now, some of you said that you had some good downpours even on this Tuesday, a little bit more isolated in nature. This is going to be some rich tropical moisture that will be moving back in. And unfortunately, some of the areas of Central America that have been dealing with that heavier rain could get additional rainfall moving back in late weekend and into early next week as well. So let's take a look at that total precipitation over the next five days. So jumping this on now again, some of this that you're going to see in Central America is what has already fallen as of Tuesday afternoon. It's the same thing for the Lesser Antilles as well. So some of this is already on the ground, but we'll talk about the additional amounts that I expect over the next five days as well. And we're gonna to start to see some of these areas hitting three, four inches of rain fairly easily. And I'm gonna start in an area that I know a lot of you have told me that you could use some of that additional rain. And that's places like Trinidad and Tobago. Three, maybe four inches of rain possible in your areas over the next five days. Grenada about four. And again, we're looking at averages here. Don't focus solely on one number here. But when I pop on a couple of these here across portions of the uh, Windward Islands, you're going to get an idea that two, three, four inches of rain is absolutely possible up towards uh, Martinique. Again, a little bit lower. I've mentioned this. You get farther north in the island chain. Generally speaking, it's going to be a little bit drier, maybe a half inch in Antigua. Anguilla could start to see a little bit more. And then again, the Virgin Islands, a little bit wetter inch and a half, two inches of rain, and then there's a little bullseye there of three inches on the eastern sides of Puerto Rico. Then we really get into the potential for some heavier rain, especially the central and the eastern sides of the Dominican Republic. There's a pretty good bullseye right there. Again, am I buying that there's going to be around seven inches of rain on the northern sides of Hispaniola? No, but that moisture moving in absolutely ha has that opportunity. Again, it hits the very high terrain of Hispaniola. We could have more downpours coming back into Haiti as well, swinging on over towards Jamaica. And again, we're just just outside the time frame of the heaviest rain. But you can see there's that bullseye just east of the island of a few inches of rain. And again, your downpours will be coming for sure. And then for the rest of Central America, again, this is offshore, but look at the rain that's gathering there. That's that moisture beginning to bubble back up late this week and into the weekend on shore. Again, portions of Panama, uh, maybe a few inches of rain there. It gets a little bit lighter up towards portions of Costa Rica there, uh, towards San Jose. Still a few inches of rain possible. And again, my hope is that the majority of the rain that you're going to see in Nicaragua and Honduras and Belize and Guatemala, most of that will have already fallen here as of Tuesday afternoon. The model is backed up into Tuesday afternoon, so it's accounting for the rain that we've already saw on Tuesday. 
but still a few inches of rain, still the opportunity for at least a little bit more in additional showers. And obviously the river flooding is something we're gonna have to monitor for days and days ahead. So again, let me know how it's going in your area and uh, just what those river flood stages are doing. All right, let's get back out to the Caribbean here. I'm gonna swing over back to the uh, uh, GFS model, and then I'm going to go back and we're gonna look at the extended time frame. So again, this will be the newest run of the GFS model. Now, what has been consistent about the GFS? It has shown a disturbance developing in the Northwest Caribbean early next week. What has been inconsistent about the model? The strength and the track of whatever that disturbance might become. Now, I mentioned it in the last video, okay? I mentioned it in the last video that the last model run was showing this moving back into Central America, which would be very unusual for November because we start to pick up these mid-latitude cyclones and these cold fronts that can work their way through the Gulf of Mexico and the Bahamas. And ahead of that, you get southwest winds. Southwest winds pushing the storms to the north and to the east. I mentioned that in the last video I did earlier today, even though the GFS brought it back to Central America. Well, now look what the GFS is doing. It's wrapping up this system and moving it northeast as we would typically see. Again, I do not want you to be overly concerned in Jamaica, in the Cayman Islands, portions of Cuba, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. Again, this is a huge change in the track from where the GFS model was just 12 hours ago. But again, it's still showing development. It hasn't just obliterated this system. This would be a fairly intense storm, especially for the second week of November. But as I've mentioned, we had a hurricane the second week of November just last year with Hurricane Nicole. So we'll have to continue to monitor this situation. Looking at the winds with this, and again, just showing you, we had a complete change, if you will, in the track, but it's a track that I would believe more in based on where the, uh, you know, where the prolific winds are this time of the year. You know, where would be the dominant winds? They'd mainly be out of the southwest, pushing things to the north and to the east. So I'm letting the GFS model run with the potential wind gusts here in knots, and it'll get towards the weekend, and you'll start to see that develop. Same area, Southwest Caribbean, moving into the Northwest Caribbean. This one is gonna be a little bit stronger than what we had 12 hours ago. Again, not Hurricane Center, not really picking up on this as of yet. We're beyond seven days, by the way. That's another thing to mention. This is the seventh. Really, this thing begins to wrap up right around that 14th, 15th time frame, and again, spins it back to the north and to the east. So you can see that development area on the GFS model. But again, don't want you to have over concerns in the areas where you see this is headed. Certainly not set in stone. I'm gonna keep you updated on it. The main purpose of this is just to reiterate that the GFS model continues to develop the disturbance in the Northwest Caribbean. Notice I'm using the word disturbance and I'm not talking about the potential intensity of this because those are questions that are so far down the road, they're not even worth getting into right now. So let's get back to the satellite here of the area. I'm gonna take the wider shot and we'll kind of just talk about again, what's gonna be happening over the next five days. Heavier showers and storms through portions of the Lesser Antilles that'll be moving into places like Hispaniola. We're gonna finally get rid of the rain in portions of Central America. And then all eyes will really begin to focus on the east to west movement of that tropical moisture and the potential development as we get into early next week. I mentioned it in the last video that we have several other ways to follow us. Let me take myself off screen. We got some of that video in from San Ignacio Belize. And if you would like to send us some pictures or video, or you just wanna follow us on our other social media platforms, that's how you do it, friends. Instagram, it's my Media Mundo. TikTok, Media Mundo. Facebook, search Media Mundo and drop us an email. First of all, we'd love to see just your beautiful sunrise and sunset photos. We've asked for that as well. And you can email any of that to mymediamundo my at gmail.com. And again, if you have any questions for me, you can drop that in the comments section below as well. We'll keep you updated here. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing. One other mention real quick is again, we continue to live stream here nearly 24 seven uh, across Media Mundo, you'll see this in the live tab. You're gonna get live updated temperatures, live updated satellite and radar data, and live tropical information 
any potential disturbance areas uh, of development from the hurricane center. And when something develops, it's tracks, those spaghetti models will come on and they'll automatically update. Again, all updating in real time. So in between these videos, check in from time to time on that live tab to get the latest information in your area. Thanks a lot, friends, again, for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time real soon, right here at Media Mundo.